This is Monika Sawyer. Welcome to Real Estate Investing for Women, where we focus on all aspects of real estate investing, including strategies, mindset, emotional mastery, money smarts, and so much more to ensure your success. If you'd like to learn my personal favorite investing strategy, just go to blissfulinvestor.com. You can also listen to this episode on the Real Estate Investing for Women podcast on iTunes. Now, let's welcome our guest. Today, I am so excited to welcome back to the show, Mark Willis. He has been on the show several times. He's been on our summit. He was in my book. He's been with me a while, and I'm so excited to bring him back today to talk about taxes. But for those of you who don't remember who Mark is, let me go ahead and reintroduce him. Mark Willis is a man on a mission to help you think differently about about banks, Wall Street, and financial uncertainty. After graduating with six figures of student loan debt and discovering a way to turn his debt into real wealth, as he watched everybody else lose their retirement investments and home equity in 2008, he knew that he needed to find a sane way to meet his financial objectives and those of his clients. Mark is a certified financial planner and number one best-selling author and the owner of Lo- Lake Growth Financial Services, a financial firm in Chicago, Illinois. Hello there, Mark. Welcome back to the show. How are hey. you? Hey, Monika. So glad to be with you. Doing great. Can't <laughs> wait to get into everything we have to cover together today. I know. When you started talking about building wealth while paying taxes, I was all in. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited mm-hmm. about yep. this. Yay. Okay. So let's start by just talking about um, tax deferred retirement plans. Cause that's what people normally think is a really good way to save on taxes. Right? Right. Yes. Uh, I want to start with a story. Um, imagine we're a farmer out in the middle of nowheresville, Iowa, let's say, and, or even more beautiful, let's say California, nothing against Iowa, but man, California is awesome. Uh, so <laughs> let's say you're a farmer and you're up early in the morning as you always are. You're getting ready for your day. You're pouring yourself a cup of coffee and there's a knock at the door and you open the door and it's an IRS agent of all people. And you're kind of puzzled, but you welcome them in. You sit them down at your uh, dinner table. You hand them a cup of coffee and you say, well, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> Uh, and the IRS agent looks you right in the eye, Monika, and says, Monika, we're going to ask you one question. And based on your answer, we're going to treat you according to your answer in your taxes for the rest of your professional life. And you say, oh, gulp, okay. And they say, here's the question. Uh, Mrs., you know, Miss Monika, do you want to be taxed on the farming seed or your harvest? Do you want to be taxed on the seed or the harvest? And you don't even have to hesitate. You reply by saying, well, of course, tax me on my seed. I want a tax-free harvest. You know the power of compounding. You know the power of multiplication. You'd rather be taxed on the seed. And so they make a few notes. He gets up to leave and he turns around as he's walking out the door and he says, well, I'm just curious. You said the seed, right? Well, why are you doing it totally backwards when it comes to your retirement plans? And that's the story. So the truth is most Americans are putting money into a tax deferred system that goes against the grain. Sorry, forgive the pun there, but it goes against our uh, intuition uh, about taxes. So I'll just hush right there, but I'm curious, does that story strike anything for you, Monica, as we kind of talk about it? Absolutely. I mean, I've never heard that story before, but it is really true and relevant, right? When you, so in our retirement programs, the money is a seed. Do you want to be, do you want to be taxed on the seeds that go in initially or on the harvest that is so worth so much more later, right? I've just never heard it that Mm -hmm. way. I love it. Well, and if you think about it, the word tax deferred, and that would be everything from your 401ks to your IRAs to 457 plans and, and uh, you know, 403b plans at a lot of hospitals and nonprofits, they offer 403b plans. They're all tax deferred retirement plans, which, you know, it's really, it's really just a postponing of what's due. So let's think about that for a minute. What is the word postpone mean? What does the word defer mean? It just means putting off until later. Now, taxes are about as fun as going to the dentist, in my opinion. (laughs) 
<laughs> and <laughs> if you, <laughs> and if you want to defer a root canal, is that a good idea? No, no, it's not a good idea to defer a root canal. And similarly, letting the tax problem build up and build up is oftentimes not a good idea. Now, I don't know everyone's tax situation listening to this podcast today, but over the thousands of phone calls and Zoom calls I've had with clients over the past decade, you know, having quick calls and long in-depth calls, evaluating people's tax scenarios. We have pretty sophisticated tax software we run for our clients. But we just have brief calls with folks too. And we just, we, we ask them the question, hey, what do you think? As you look at the nation, as you look at your personal financial situation, are taxes going to be lower or higher in the future? And Monica, almost every person, I can't think of a single person who's ever said other than, Mark, I think taxes are going to go higher in this country over my lifetime. And I tend to agree with that. I look at the, you know, it's not a matter of political left or political right. Uh, the math party <laughs> says that taxes have to go up. Uh, so I think it's important to ask ourselves, if taxes are going to be higher and we've put off the tax payment, do you want to pay those extra taxes on money or would you rather have a tax-free harvest? That's sort of the looming question every person has to ask, at least if you're a, a tax-paying U.S. citizen. Well, there's also something else to really consider here that I think is really relevant. You know, we've been trained to think that we make a ton of money, we put a bunch away, we have our kids, we have all these expenses that happen during our life. But then when we retire, we're going to be living on our retirement income, which is going to be significantly less than what we're making when right. we're earning money. So when we start pulling mm -hmm. that money out, we're going to be in a lower tax bracket. So whether the taxes go up or yeah. down, regardless, we're going to be in a lower tax bracket. Now, I just want to ask you ladies, when you retire, after however many years you put in of hard work and bringing up your family and not getting to travel and making sacrifices, hopefully you haven't done too much of that. Hopefully you've been blissful. But whatever you've done, right? Do you want to be living on less than what you're making now? I say no. Mm, my right, retirement right. is not going to happen until mm -hmm. I can live my current lifestyle or better. I want to travel more. Yeah. I want to be more with my parents. I want to be affording a nicer house, even if it's like a little condo penthouse, right? Like whatever it is, yeah. I want more than this lifestyle, not less. I'm not going to work all these years for less. So if you think right. about that, you're deferring now all of this income, you're going to be paying taxes at the current tax bracket or higher and on more as opposed to on less, mm -hmm. right? Even if, it's so true, Monica, even if taxes are only 1% higher than they are today, on a mathematical basis, it makes more sense to pay our taxes today. I'm not telling everyone to do that, but you're so right. I, I, I'm thinking about like anecdotally, I can't think of any retirees that were even moderately successful in their investments or their savings or their real estate investing who are in a lower bracket. It's just a myth. It's an old fashioned myth. Uh, it's a and marketing we've been living strategy. in low brackets. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a marketing mm -hmm. strategy. Say some more about that. And it came, well, because in the earlier days when a lot of this stuff was developed and Mark, you can correct me on my timing, people were getting pensions they were able to live on social security because of the cost of living hadn't increased so much, right? So there was mm -hmm. some fixed income things that they could count on. So the average man could count on being able to retire without having to invest and without having to be financially savvy, right? Mm -hmm. If that right. in fact is true, they are gonna be in a lower bracket. And so now when you start talking about a tax deferred retirement plan, you are in a lower bracket. That's how this whole thing started, right? right. But now in the modern yep. day where most of us will, don't have pensions, we, are not, we don't believe we're gonna be able to live off of social security. We are investing, we are hoping to create a lifestyle for ourselves, a retirement that we deserve and have worked for, right? So I think yes. that's the big difference. It, it started as marketing. It's just not relevant anymore. Right, exactly. Well, and I'll even say this with regard to traditional retirement plans, and I have nothing against them. I just think we're using them for the wrong thing. When I was a little kid, my parents would get on me if I was using my toys in a way that weren't really designed, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so if I was throwing like my uh, Game Boy in the bathtub, that's not going to end well, right? Uh, so <laughs> it's not uh, a for a boat ball. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
And the same is true with our financial toys or vehicles, whatever you want to call them. Don't, you know, everything has a place. Nothing is wrong or bad. It's just a question of what do you truly want your money to do for you? If you want your money taxed in the future, that's great. But let's think about it this way. Let's say that you put, you had somehow a million dollars in your 401k on the day you plan to retire. That's great. Congratulations. You're a 401k millionaire. But wait, some, in fact, a significant portion of that money is not yours. You have a partner with you in your 401k. It's an equity partner, you might say, in your 401k. If you tried to take a million dollars out of your 401k next year after you retired, it would look suspiciously like 400,000 or 600,000 bucks. 400,000, of course, would go to the IRS. Now, here's something to kind of keep in mind. How much of that million dollars was due as a fee to the advisor and the wrap account charges and the investment load costs baked into your 401k? Even if you just had a 1% fee, that could be as much as a third of your life savings gone to fees over your, over your 401k's lifetime according to the, the Department of Labor. Now, did the government help you with that fee? Did the IRS help support that fee since they were a partner with you in the 401k? Or did you have to come up with the full fee by yourself and now the government is taking all of their money out fee free, of course, right? And by the way, while we're talking about it, who bore the risk of that 401k? Did the IRS bear the risk or did you? did I, did us as citizens bear that risk of the market going down or whatever else? It's a, it's a fool's errand to try to like beat the system when we're using a product that was designed by the government. I'm not anti or pro any political party, but it's important to realize that when the government creates a, a problem called high taxation and then creates a solution to that problem, like tax deferred retirement plans, you gotta just ask yourself, are you being manipulated here? <laughs> and that's important to ask, especially when it comes to creating a financial life that brings bliss and brings happiness. Yeah, so true. Such a good tax conversation, but I'm really eager to find out what we can do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So talk to me, yeah. talk to me about what you got for us. <laughs> sure. Well, hey, you know, it's not assumed. I guess um, there's, this, there's something I want to just chat about quickly, which is uh, something called Overton's Window. Overton's Window uh, is a really cool, uh, it's a strategy or framework for talking about things that are um, acceptable and unthinkable. So have you ever done Mad Libs? I have. Monica, is this something that, yes. yeah, don't you yes. love these? I love cracking up with my buddies. Even, I don't care if you're 34 or 11 years old, you just love a good Mad Lib. And I think what makes Mad Libs work is we are outside of Overton's window. And this is what Overton's window is. A long time ago, you could say something on the street and it would be totally acceptable. If you said the same thing on the street in 2020 or 2021, uh, it would be absolutely absurd to say something uh, that, that may have been so, so acceptable years ago. I think mm -hmm. taxes similarly uh, have gone through a major shift in our understanding of what they're for and what they're there to do for us. Uh, but you know what? There's, there's a number of places we can put our money that still may be outside of the acceptable or outside of what's common or outside of what's regularly thought of as a retirement savings vehicle. I mean, you, you teach all the time, Monica, about alternative ways to prepare for financial sanity and financial bliss uh, that have nothing to do with 401ks or IRAs. And all, uh, I guess they're even older than the 401k, right? The 401k and IRA are really not even old enough to retire yet. Right. The first 401k was issued in 1981. But some of your strategies in real estate, which provide incredible tax benefits on the seed and the harvest, uh, have been around since the pyramids. I mean, investing in real estate is as old as time itself, uh, human right. civilization. So, you know, we have some pretty cool topics and details that we'll be, you and I will be diving deeper into. But, you know, I just want to uh, remind your, your awesome audience that it's not a, it's not a shoe in, it's not a um, locked in strategy where we must follow the guidance of the person who gave us that 401k. Yes, you probably want to take that company match most of the time, but for all of my real 
cash accumulation and investing. I'm looking outside amateur retail investment products like 401ks. And I'm looking at things that have been more time tested and that aren't going to sting me when I go to get my cash out in retirement or heck even before retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how you talk about, you know, there are all these different vehicles and there's some for more of the amateur investment vehicle. And then there's some more expert type vehicles. You don't need to know a lot to be, to become an expert. You just have to start. Mm -hmm start looking at that and mm -hmm. start studying it. I agree that if you have a 401k that matches, you take that. I mean, we, we um, completely max out our 401k with my husband's company every single year. So I'm not anti 401k either, but I think it's a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so many people depend on it as being the puzzle, right? And we don't want it to be the puzzle. We want right. it to be a piece. Real mm -hmm. estate could be another piece. Um, you know, self-directed, mm -hmm. Roth could be another piece and your programs could be another piece, right? Like there's a lot of different ways that we can create and that's what you want. You want, um, you want kind of a basket of diversified ways for you to create that wealth mm -hmm. as you retire, right? Absolutely. In fact, I'd say have six streams of tax-free income mm -hmm. to diversify against any taxable income. Here's a few kind of fun ones. You mentioned Roth accounts. That's a great one. Uh, and I think that's a smart one, uh, especially as long as the Roth uh, exists in, in the tax code. Uh, it's only been since, what, 1997 that yeah, we've had Roth accounts. super recent. Uh, so as long as they last, let's take them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so another one would be uh, some real estate that we can continue to depreciate. And if your accountant hasn't already brought up things like bonus depreciation and cost segregation, bring it up to them and then be concerned that they didn't bring it up to you first. Uh, and then the, the next thing I'd say is look at um, life insurance as a stream of income in retirement. Those life insurance cash values, not term insurance, but cash value insurance can actually be a safe alternative to investing that provides a tax-free income in retirement. Some people call it the rich person's Roth because there's less restrictions than a Roth account uh, in the way of like how much you want to contribute to it and that sort of thing. Another really kind of, again, we're talking about things that are outside the norm, Overton's window, right? But if you think outside the norm, let's think about some others. Uh, if you can take only uh, your home equity and reverse it, you can actually be paid by the bank tax-free to live in your house for as long as you live. Now, this is uh, different than the late night reverse mortgage infomercials. And I don't uh, always recommend these uh, home equity conversion mortgages, but that's something PhDs and, econ and economists like Wade Fowle have been purporting and recommending folks look into as a, as a fourth or even fifth stream of tax-free money. If you can splice up and diversify your tax-free streams of income, all of a sudden the remaining 401k money you have, check this out. This is kind of cool. If, if, you're, if your listeners are savvy math folks, I think they'll like this. It's good to have some tax deferred 401k or IRA money, as long as we have something called the standard deduction. And if your listeners know the currently at 2020 tax code says the standard deduction for someone married filed jointly is $24,800. So as long as your taxable income is below 24,800 out of that 401k, you can deduct it all. And you could be living on six figures of income from all those streams I just listed for you guys and still report zero taxes on your tax return every year throughout your retirement. That to me is freedom. Why? Because if tax rates do go up, if they go twice as high, zero times anything is still zero. It's, it's a phenomenal way to live free in retirement. Right. Awesome. Thank you for that. So um, what intrigued me so much is talking about your system for paying taxes, right? Because um, all mm -hmm. of us have to pay taxes, <laughs> yes. unless you're doing what you just mm -hmm. talked about. But right now we all have to pay taxes, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yep. So let's talk about mm -hmm. this crazy idea that you have about building wealth while paying taxes. <laughs> okay. And well, I know you've got so we've been talking... 
I was going to yeah, say, I know go you're only going to be able to give us a high level. Ladies, I just want to let you know yep. that we are setting up a webinar with Mark because I'm so intrigued by this concept and it's, it's relevant right now, right? Taxes are right around the corner. So I want him to give mm -hmm. you a high level now and then we'll give you information on a webinar so he can dive deeper. We'll have a whole hour together and uh, he can give yes. you a lot more information then. Okay. So, but go ahead and just introduce us to the idea. So we've been talking a lot about ways to lower our taxes both today and over the lifetime, but what about what we're still having to pay at the end of each year? If you're a business owner or if you have a small business, oftentimes you have a big check you have to write. Uh, let's imagine that you, you could somehow write that check to yourself first and earn some growth before you pay it to Uncle Sam. We're still paying our taxes, but what if you could build a lot of wealth off the tax bill that you have to send to the IRS? Guys, I had to send a six-figure tax bill to the IRS last year, and it was painful. But what if you could put that money into something that you could earn interest and grow wealth on while you're still paying your taxes? So that's the, the quick byline for our webinar. So totally check out that webinar. And I'll mention, you know, even if you don't pay a whole lot or think you don't pay a lot in taxes, I'll give a quick story had a lady who came in, she was 35 years old. She was paying, we, we totaled it up, her wage deductions and more were about six grand a year in taxes, making about 50 grand a year, 35 years old. We estimated over the next 35 years, six grand times 35 years of work was $210,000 for her taxes. That's 210,000 bucks. So that's a lot of money just to keep Uncle Sam happy. But if she had put that six grand a year into a 5% interest earning account, her money would have been an extra half a million dollars at retirement that she won't have and Uncle Sam will. So it's important to think about how can we build wealth on the biggest, oftentimes it's the biggest expense of our life. And I, I hate to even say that because we'll spend more on our taxes than we will on our spouses. We'll spend more on our taxes than our own children. We'll spend taxes on, more on taxes than probably any other major expense that I can imagine, uh, except maybe, well, I, can't, I really can't think of anything else. The, the truth is taxes are a big part of each of our lives. And if you could find a way to build wealth off that major payment every year, you'd be set for life without taking a bunch of unnecessary risk. So that's the, the short and, and sweet of it. Perfect. Good. So um, give us an example for you. You had six figures. Let's say we owe $100,000 tax, taxes. Give us a really quick mm -hmm. high level example of how that would look. Sure. Okay. So first of all, we had a great accountant who brought that money down to as low as possible, but profits are profits and you got to report them. So we still had a major tax bill at the end of the year. What we decided to do uh, was say, Hey, you know what? We're going to put that into a savings vehicle that we can earn some interest on. Now, the problem with most savings vehicles is that when you withdraw money out, it stops growing. I think, I mean, that seems obvious, right? If I put money into a savings account or a CD, and then I withdraw that money out, Monica, how much interest am I now earning on that cash? Well, nothing, Zero. right? Yeah. And I can only earn interest slowly as I pack money up for next tax year. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm always faced with falling back down the staircase down to zero net worth and having to build that up again, only to spend it again. It was a never ending cycle. So what we decided to do was put it into an asset that allowed it to continue to grow even when we access the cash to pay our tax bill. So using it as a line of credit to ourselves, essentially, we used a cash value life insurance policy designed the bank on yourself way uh, for your listeners who want to learn more about that. Uh, and we'll be diving deep into how that works, showing real numbers on the webinar. But we use that to use as a cash source to pay our tax bill. And we'll continue to do so every tax bill we have which will add millions of dollars to our net worth over our lifetime just by how we're paying for our taxes. Now, everyone's numbers are gonna be different, but those are our figures. And you could you know, use that same person, that 35 year old uh, lady who called me up, we had a Zoom call. She was floored when we saw what we could do with a similar strategy on even a nominal amount of tax every year. Mm -hmm. And this strategy is so much cooler than what Mark has to talk, is able to talk about right now, um, because you get you at you get paid interest on that. You don't actually have to pay back that money. I mean, there are different ways mm -hmm. to to do this so yeah. that you can totally maximize the wealth that you're building while you pay your taxes each year, right? So absolutely. Um, 
really amazing. Well, let's, let's expand it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, let's, let's expand it to real estate. You could do the same with your real estate. You could do it the same with uh, your own major purchases, vehicles, any major purchase, including taxes, this fits. As long as you've sat down with a competent professional to look at it first, you don't want to just jump into this um, half blind, but you can absolutely, you know, take that control of that money. And by the way, it is a, ta like I mentioned earlier, it's a tax-free income stream under current law, uh, just right alongside Roth IRAs and other accounts. Uh, so you're right. It, it's a phenomenal change in the mindset uh, for how we make our major purchases. Mm, it's so exciting. I'm so excited about the webinar. So let's give them a brief um, rundown on kind of what that's going to look like. So first of all, the webinar is going to be on January 21st, which is a mm -hmm. Thursday. We're going to be doing it from 1 to 2.30 Pacific time. So January 21st, which is a Thursday, 1 to 2.30 Pacific time. So that's two weeks away, ladies. And to get signed up for that webinar, you go to blissfulinvestor.com forward slash Mark, M-A-R-K for Mark Willis. <laughs> so blissfulinvestor.com forward slash Mark. So Mark, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be covering in that. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have some specific ways in which you can lower your tax bill today without building up a taxable time bomb in the future. We're going to be talking about ways you can specifically as a business owner or just someone who's got a day job, find some incredible tax gaps in the current code to take advantage of for yourself, uh, paying what's due, of course, but never leaving the tax man a tip. That's kind of my mantra. Uh, and uh, then finding some specific ways you can use the uh, strategy we just described to actually build real wealth on your tax bill and all your other major purchases too. Uh, and so we'll even be showing some real case studies and examples, and then a chance to see how we can even pull out of this asset a tax-free income stream that'll last as long as you do. I love that. And ladies, the reason that I asked Mark to do this webinar specifically was because two of you called me um, or emailed me and let me know that you did join up with Mark or Amanda Neely in the past and that the whole infinite investing idea is real and you're discovering how to use it and you love it. And then I have some other mentors of mine that are also working with Mark, for instance, Chris Prefontaine, um, who you guys also know. So there's some people that I really trust that are working with Mark with this strategy. There's some of you ladies that have given me feedback that this is totally amazing. You love it. So I wanted to just highlight it for the rest of you to see how you might be able to utilize it for yourself. So that's why we're doing this webinar. I think it's going to be really valuable. Definitely go sign up. Um, it's going to be at blissfulinvestor.com forward slash Mark. If you sign up and you can't make it, um, he will send a replay out for you ladies. And then the other thing is if you feel like you would rather just speak to Mark <laughs> and not go to the webinar, like you're already sold, um, he's going to give you his calendar link. So how can they do that? Well, if you go to lakegrowth.com slash schedule, that's L-A-K-E-G-R-O-W-T-H.com slash schedule. And then just mention Monica in the calendar link uh, when you fill out the appointment uh, schedule and you're setting your time. It's a 15 minute phone call or Zoom call. We are uh, happy to answer your questions or just if you can't wait for the webinar and just want to get right to the answers, happy to schedule that with you right away. But make sure to mention Monica in the uh, appointment that you set. And I'd be happy to send you a free copy of the chapter that Monica and I co-authored together in the awesome book, Real Estate Investing for Women, which was so fun to write. Uh, and thank you, Monica, again for the opportunity. So if folks want to be uh, on that calendar before the webinar, I'd be happy to chat with you guys. Uh, I don't know if this is too much to say live, Monica, but um, it may even be that those that attend the webinar gets that uh, chapter as well. I'll leave that up to you to decide, but um, I just want to get this information out to folks. And I think it'll be uh, so much fun. I can't wait to be there with your listeners and your audience again. You've got the greatest, greatest folks in the world. Oh, thank you. I think so too. I love my ladies. <laughs> 
and we'll get some time to really kind of go through it. You know, on a podcast, we go high level. It's pretty quick, right? Um, because not everybody's mm -hmm. interested. But for those of you who are interested, we'll get some really good time to deep dive. I've scheduled for 90 minutes. So he and I have that commitment on our calendar. We can go through the webinar, ask questions, you know, that sort of thing. So ladies, definitely come join Mark and I on January 21st, which is a Thursday from 1 to 230 p.m. Pacific time and go to blissfulinvestor.com forward slash Mark. So Mark, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us again today. You're such a giving person, Monica. Thank you for what you give to the world and keep up the great work. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies, thank you so much for joining Mark and I for this portion of the show. We look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, always remember, Goals without action are just dreams. So get out there, take action, and create the life your heart deeply desires. I'll see you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to download my favorite investing strategy, just go to blissfulinvestor.com. See you next time.